Max, we're on. Hey everybody, how are you? Good morning. It's a bright, cheery Sunday morning. And uh, I hope you're doing well. You know what? It's ridiculous for me to be in sunglasses inside, isn't it? But I wanted to introduce to you my little man, Max. And uh, Max has made his way into several of the videos, but I thought it would be important for you to actually meet him. So say hello, Max. There he is. Okay. All right. He's, uh, he's getting uncomfortable here, but he's a good boy. He's my buddy. So this is Max. Anyway, hey, I hope you're all doing okay. Um, hopefully we are getting to be on the other side of this thing, this disruption and everything that we talk with it. But I'm going to tell you what, uh, I am excited to hear testimonies and good things that God is doing in your lives. One thing is so important, I want you to uh, know that I have discovered there is a, another food group that is vitally important, okay? And uh, it, is, it, it comes from the Father's Table, and there's even 12 components to this thing. And it's absolutely amazing. It's, it's called Cheesecake. And uh, cheesecake is a wonderful thing. It's, it's another food group that I would encourage you to, to try. And it's even called the Father's Table, and there's 12. That's got to be super spiritual, right? One for each of the 12 disciples. You guys are thinking I'm crazy, but I'm, you know, I am. That's okay. Hey, God bless you. I hope you are having a good week. And you know what? We've been in a, uh, a series that uh, we were talking about the uh, of, of spiritual warfare and we've been looking at some different aspects of that last week uh, obviously we celebrated Easter I pray that it was a great day for you and I pray that the resurrection life of Jesus is coming alive on the inside of you and I pray that even during these times right now where you might feel a little bit disconnected that Jesus is just being really uh, close to you you know he is he's just a prayer away and I just want to encourage you man get in your Bible get get into prayer and just do the things that you can do okay so so many times we focus on the things that we can't do and then we miss out on the very things that we can do so i just want to encourage you in that so anyway in uh, I, I just want to kind of revisit uh the, the or bring uh, this message to a little bit of a conclusion we've we've answered the who we know that the enemy of our soul satan is is a is one that we're warring against uh the the what the who and the what the what is the territory, you know, uh, the territory of our own lives, the territory of the lives of others. Uh, the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. As the church, man, we are a force to be reckoned with, and we may not always feel that way, but when we truly uh, figure out who we are in Jesus, man alive, uh, hell cannot prevail. And uh, one of the things that we need to do is be taking territory for Jesus. And, and I pray that that's something in your life that you're able to do. It looks a lot different for different people, but I want to tell you right now, it's we are called to be a force in, in the world, and, and we are called to influence culture. Uh, so that is the what, the who, the what, the where. Well, the battle is fought on all fronts, isn't it? It's, all fr it's fought on the front of my individual life, the collective life, the body of Christ. It's, it's fought really wherever we go. One of the things that we really focused in on was the mind and how important it is that we take all of our thoughts captive because, man, you know how easy it is for just to let our minds wander and it can just go to places that, uh, you know, and we, we can just begin to listen to the voice of the enemy. Uh, my good friend... Uh, Fred, all right? I'm going to give you credit, Fred. Uh, he sent me a, uh, a text, and I want to read this to you. I thought this was just absolutely uh, hilarious. And uh, Fred sent this to me, and it says this. It, say, it says, today, all right, the devil whispered in my ear, you are not strong enough. You know, you might even hear that from time to time. Uh, to withstand the storm that you're in, okay? Here's the devil just whispering in his ear, and I love the, the reply. It says, I scream, step back six feet, you idiot. Ah! 
Ah, Corona. Okay, man, I'm going to tell you right now, we do need to get six feet back and much further from the enemy. And in Jesus' name, get away from our lives. We need to take all of our thoughts captive and bring them to the Lord. Uh, so I just want to encourage you. So the where, the battle front of our, our mind. Who, what, where, why? Why? Because we're commanded to. We're commanded to in the scriptures. And Jesus commanded us to go and to make disciples and to proclaim the gospel, man, and to preach to every living creature. And if you need practice, man, I, I'm going to tell you what, I, I practice with Max sometimes. Uh, Max has gotten saved. He must have been saved 50 times already. Uh, he, he is a very spiritual dog. I'm going to tell you that right now, but he's a good boy. Uh, but anyway, just preach the gospel. Uh, with your life, more importantly with you, than with your words, just live it out, man. Be a real one. People aren't looking for perfection, but be a real one, okay? So that, that is the, the who, the what, the where, and the why, and the when. Well, we know this. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Everybody say today. Today is the day of salvation, okay? And, uh, you know, the times are urgent. And we need to realize that we do live in urgent times. So recognize that today is the day of salvation. There's no better time than today. You know, live your life before people in such a way that they will see the God in you. Uh, I believe it's Matthew 5, 16. It says, live your life in such a way that they will see the good in you and they will glorify God who is in heaven, not you. We don't need the glory. We don't want to bring the glory to ourselves. I recently heard a politician, oh my goodness, I couldn't even believe the guy said it. He was, you know, asking for prayer and asking for all this, but then when it came down to the solution, he actually said, God didn't do this, prayer didn't do this, faith didn't do this. We, You know, friends, when we start talking that way, that's just utter nonsense. The Bible says that the fool has said in his heart that there is no God. We need to remember that all the glory goes to God. And you know, yes, we need to do our part, and I recognize all of that. But boy, when we start to take on an arrogant position like that, friends, it's like, it's like just uh, saying to God, you know, we don't need you. But but the reality is that we desperately need God in every situation of our lives. So just, man, be careful when we talk like that. It's, it's just a, an about face. And I, I tell you what, I love Jesus and I love everything and I got to do my part. But even though, you know, I, I might do my part, all glory goes to God. In fact, the Bible tells us that no flesh will glory in my presence. And those are the words from the heart of God. He's a jealous God. The glory belongs to him, not to us, friends. So let's remember that. So the who, the what, the where, the why, and the when. The when is the now. And then we come to the how, okay? Now, I want to read you a quick scripture here. And uh, it's in chapter Luke. I was just having a great conversation with a friend this week. And uh, uh, we were talking about this very scripture, and it's amazing how God just kind of confirms things that were already, I had already even had this kind of planned out. But then I felt like this scripture was appropriate to put in here. And it says this, it's in Luke chapter 9, and it starts with verse 23. And it says this, Then he said to them all, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross daily and follow me. Whoever wants to save their lives will lose it, but whoever loses their life for me, well, that person's going to save their life. What good is it for someone to gain the whole world and yet lose or forfeit their very soul? You know, uh, there, there's a key verse in there, and the, the verse that uh, was really kind of revolving, I want to focus in on is this. It's that whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves, take up their cross daily, and follow him. You know, sometimes we have this idea of what taking up the cross is. You know, well, I just got to bear my burden. No, I just got to do this. No, that's not what that verse is talking about. Um, in the first century, they clearly would have recognized that the cross represented death, okay? Um, it was a symbol of death. It was the very uh, cross that, that brought a death 
uh, to, to Jesus and the sin. Obviously, we know that Jesus overcame the crucifixion, but the cross represented death. So what are the what what is uh, Jesus saying? Take up your cross daily. Basically, it's it's the contention of that we can't be living for two kingdoms, man, because those two kingdoms, the kingdom of this world and the king, the kingdom of man and the kingdom of of the Lord, are at opposite ends of the spectrum. You see, in Matthew six thirty three. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these other things will be added unto you. See, sometimes we focus on all the other things, right? And we mentioned that in our last message. But the truth of the matter is, is that God needs to come first in all things, the kingdom of God. So when we take up our cross, what we're essentially doing is we're putting to death. Okay, we're taking up death to self, my selfish ways, my ways of doing things, because the Bible clearly says that his ways are higher than my ways. And, and I don't always think like God thinks. I think like a selfish man. And I'm going to tell you what, I can be very selfish, and we can all be very selfish, but God is not. And when we think like God, we put ourselves aside. When we take up our cross, we put the death. The deeds of the flesh. Now, we also know in uh, Galatians and also in Ephesians, but in Galatians at the end there, it talks about how, you know, we, we are to walk in the Spirit so that we will not gratify the desires of the flesh. This is the how. How do we live this thing out? It's putting to death. It's taking up our cross, okay? And putting to death the, the, the deeds of our flesh. Well, what are those deeds? Well, I'm going to tell you what. The flesh always wants to do the opposite of the Spirit. And that's what those verses are talking about. Walk in the Spirit, okay, of God, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. This is a much easier thing to do. Uh, or It's easier said than it's actually lived out. And I'm going to tell you right now, God has ways that are not our ways, but he also has the empowerment for you to live this thing out. Remember, the resurrection life, we spoke about this last week, not only did it cleanse you and I from our sin, and that's awesome, but it also empowered you and I to live for him each and every day. So I just want to encourage you today. You know, I don't have a long message today, and, and I hope that you uh, are actually viewing this till the end. But Jesus does have a way that is, is not our way. And, and when we read these verses, you know, we look at the who and the what and the where and the why and the when. And then we look at the how. We have to live dead dead to self, alive to Jesus, alive in Christ. We need, you know, the Bible describes when we receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we, and we, we are new creations, you know. God initiated a relationship with you and I, but you and I still have to say yes. We still have a free will. He's not going to impose himself against our will. We have to yield our will to him and live for him each and every day. Now, friend, I love you, and, and, I, and I know that sometimes, you know, and, and maybe you're watching this, and, you know, you've heard all about church stuff and Christian, you know, I, I know there's a lot of people that have given Christianity a bad name. There's a lot of churches, man, they, they've done things in the name of Jesus that it just, it, sometimes it just boggles my mind. But I'm going to tell you, we can't have our eyes on man. We have to have our eyes on Jesus because he's truly the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the only one that's worthy. There's nothing in and of a man that's worthy. And we can't lift up people. I've been in situations and I've watched people. They, it's almost like they huddle around. Uh, somebody's just so gifted. And, and you know, and it's almost like we worship the, the, the gift that's inside of them. And then we forget that they're just a, a regular man or a regular woman just like you and me. I'm going to tell you what, friends, keep your eyes on Jesus. In fact, the scriptures tell us to fix our eyes on Jesus. Why? Because he is the author and he is the perfecter of our faith. You want to become more and more like Jesus? I'm going to tell you what, keep your eyes on him.
Keep your thoughts upon him. Keep your keep your battles, you know, where they belong. You know, sometimes we 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 go into battles that we were never called to even fight. Let's make sure that we're not going out trying to pick fights with the devil. But when he comes our way, we walk in the authority that we have in Jesus, because he has given us all authority over over the enemy of our souls. Friends, I love you. I hope you're having a great week, and uh, I, I just pray that you will. Uh, just consider in this area of spiritual warfare uh, the necessity to just really press into God and, and, and to see ourselves die to self and become alive in Jesus. All right? Hey, and while you're at it, don't forget about the next food group and go get yourself a piece of delicious cheesecake. Hey! God bless you. I hope you have a great week in Jesus. Have a good one.